Greetings, my Israelite brothers and sisters, heirs, joint heirs, adopted, grafted, natural, spiritual, however you may come. We want to say greetings to all of you all and happy Sabbath. Uh, we had a very good Bible study last night. I kind of, you know, just thought over the subject matter and and we gave a lot of good information and and i uh, thank all of you all for tuning in this afternoon this afternoon uh, i'm on my way to the congregation now because this morning this is medical month for us we have two professional uh people in the medical field who is going to be teaching from a biblical perspective the importance of health and why we are going through what we are going through um, one is a physician assistant and one is a registered nurse. They're both members of Bethel and they're going to be talking this morning. Unfortunately, we won't be able to uh, stream that. Um, there's a lot of legalities and stuff like that as to why we don't do that uh, when it comes to this particular subject. But one of the things we do cover, we cover number one, why uh, are the people uh, going through what they're going through? What, how, and we link it to some of the curses that God said uh, that would happen, as well as as well as that the statistic how we are the number one in most diseases. You find that people of minority, whether it's African American, Hispanic American, in the United States, are number one in a lot of stuff, but yet they are. Uh, the lowest in population and so we bring that out from a biblical perspective and tie it in um, but we also show that there is a way out and the way out is to dwell in the secret place of the most high because he says he will protect you and he uh, also said uh, that in, in Deuteronomy that wherever we are after we have been scattered if we return back to him he would return back to us that makes it an individual thing Israel as a nation would never be put together until the Most High returns so um, it's important that we once we understand that and we get back to eating properly uh, dieting properly uh, on in addition with uh, living according to the commandments, laws, statutes, and judgments, we'll find that we'll have a healthier life with a healthier lifestyle. So they cover a lot of good information uh, in that as professionals bringing and tying in um, good health with good biblical uh, a, a good biblical foundation. So I'm very happy about this lesson and. Last year we did it for just a few weeks and by popular demand and request, it's going to be a month. And so the month of December, we're covering all of that. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's gonna be at 10.30 this morning. So I'm on my way there now to just be a part of that lesson. Um, at 12.30, 12.15, we'll be starting, well actually 12 o'clock, we'll be starting our afternoon service. And um, but those that would like, if you're here locally and you want a four days experience, come at 1030. And what we call a four day experience is a four hour service. We're there from 1030 to 230. And at 230, we start to eat and break bread together. And uh, one thing I like about Bethel is that we provide food for everybody every week. I mean, we have a good lunch. Uh, it's provided and we just it's something that we do just to make sure that we all fellowship so it's a part of our operating budget and I thank the Almighty that it's a part of our operating budget and the staff that we have on Thursdays and Fridays they'll go out and get the food prepare it and then by Sabbath we have a nice uh, meal uh, so we thank the Almighty for that uh, this afternoon, the lesson is going to be about um, a building block of what we did. We did um, three weeks, we did um, uh, spiritual growth. 
and then we picked it up last week uh, if you love me keep my commandments if you love me keep my commandments love the greatest is the greatest commandment of them all and we broke down uh, the love of God and the love of for mankind and on these two hang all the law and the prophets uh, if you say that you love him and you cannot hate your brother who you see every day so we this is all building upon character building your character letting you be an individual that's going to be acceptable um, as a, a living sacrifice obedience is that sacrifice because obedience is better than sacrifice but being obedient to the word today we're going to bring it from an angle about the law the law of Moses and the law of God we're going to uh, look at both of those as a subject because there are people that uh, look at the law of Moses and look at the law of God and they distinguish the both of them and we're going to really explore whether or not they are separated are they two separate laws are they one and the same you know it was one of them done away with and the other one wasn't we're going to get into that this afternoon it's going to be a very good subject straight clear all scriptures right to the point so the questions we're putting on the table that we find in the bible that even the disciples even jesus mentioned the law of moses the book of moses and then we all know there's the law of god so is there a distinguish between the two we're going to find that out this afternoon um, uh, have they have have if, if some say there's a distinguish between the two we're going to find that out but is there one been nailed to the cross one done away with we're going to find all of that those are, good, those are good answers that we have to put on the table good questions i'm sorry that we have to put on the table but we're going to get the answers to all of that this afternoon at one o'clock during our message so uh tune in at one o'clock eastern time because many people are told that there's the difference you know you got the law of God then you gotta look at the law of Moses and the law of uh, some say the law of God was nailed to the cross some say the law of Moses was nailed to the cross was anything in fact nailed to the cross at all what was nailed to the cross you know uh, there's five different laws out there you got the the royal law you got the you got the uh, sacrificial law you got the ceremonial law you got the dietary law you got the penal law the penal law is P-E-N-A-L. When you do something wrong, there's a penalty. And the penal law connects itself to the sacrificial law. So there's a lot of things out there to understand. And so hopefully this afternoon, when we talk about the law of God and the law of Moses, we're going to determine, are they one and the same? Are they two separate? Which one was done with what? Who gave one? Where did they both come from? So we're going to talk about that this afternoon because this is a subject that a lot of people, even in the Sabbath keeping realm, they run from the subject. They don't know uh, the answer to those questions when those thoughts and subjects are put on the table, especially when it comes to defending the Sabbath and the commandments and whether or not we have to do them or not. We're going to also look at who are they for. Were they just exclusively for the children of Israel or are they for everybody? So we're going to look at that this afternoon at one o'clock. You know, we have a lot to cover within that hour, but we will get it done. We will put all scriptures on the table. Uh, this, when, when we bring lessons like this, you cannot come with an opinion. You cannot come with a thought or this is how I see it. Scripture says that the word of God be true and every man a liar. You have to put forth the word, that the word of God be true and every man a liar. So when we answer these questions, it cannot be an opinion that I have. It cannot be a perception that I have. The word of God is clear and concise. And we will get to the answer of these questions this afternoon at one o'clock. So tune in, tune in because I think this is a very important uh, lesson and it built it was it, it's something that built in the past month if you notice uh actually the month and a half uh going into two months 
we have been building on uh, character, morals, principles, uh, all of that. We've been building on it. One thing I will tell you that man cannot define what righteousness is. Righteousness must be defined by God. Because if you leave it up to man to define righteous, what one culture see as being righteous may not be what another see. Another, we must look at what is righteous according to the eyes of the Most High. What did he leave? One thing that we do know is that Israel was supposed to be a nation that would be a righteous nation that other nations would look to as a guide. However, we find that Israel failed. They followed after the other nations instead of being a leader for the nations. And this is what got Israel in trouble. Israel's in trouble today. Israel's in bondage today. Israel has been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth today. Will not be regathered until the Messiah returns. That's scriptures, that's Bible. He says, I will gather you one by one from the nations wherein you have been scattered and that won't take place until he returns. But in the meanwhile, we as individuals, wherever we are, we must teach this gospel got to teach the gospel. We got to let people know what is righteous according to the word of God. But again, if the scriptures, if we don't depend on the scriptures to tell us and show us what is righteous, we will define righteous based upon our own eyesight. The scriptures even talked about if anybody does good and it's not according to the law, but yet though it's good, it's they're doing good according to their own accord. One of those things is something called the golden rule. Y'all, you all heard of that. The golden rule says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Um, so that's the golden rule. But it's a golden rule. It's a, it's a good rule, but it's a rule unto yourself. It's similar to the law of God, but it's not the law of God. So uh, that's important to know and understand that, that when we get into stuff like that, like somebody might say, well, you know, uh, an atheist can tell you I don't steal. An atheist can tell you that I treat people the way I want to be treated. But that's righteousness according to their sight. Righteousness must be done according to the design and the framework that God has laid out. And that's why we do it. We don't do it for no other cause. I do it because God said it. And I'm doing what God says do because I want to enter into that kingdom. I'm not doing it because I think that this is what's right and this is what I feel good about. Yeah, it could be. Atheists and people who don't who are non-believers have these same things. But uh, I'm back. I'm back. Uh, I went um, spinning for a second. So um, it's, it's all to themselves. I said Isaiah 66 says that they that sanctify themselves behind the tree. You cannot sanctify yourself. The only person that can sanctify us is the word. The word separates us. It's the word that, that makes us what we are, who we are. We do things because of the word, because the word commands us. And that must be the very principle in which we do what we do. So, wanted to leave that to you. And uh, I'm gonna get inside of the congregation. I'm excited about to see what this lesson is gonna be about today. So again, tune in at uh, one o'clock Eastern time. There about, we'll try to make it as uh, close to that time as possible. Um, you know, it won't be before one, but it'd be one, one fifteen. But just hit that bell so that you can get it, and we'll try to make the lesson as thorough as possible, answering those questions that I put on the table this morning and this afternoon. Peace, happy Sabbath to you all.